These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Taking on our awesome quiz champions today are the Stone Revelers from Staffordshire. Now, this team are all members of the same musical theatre group, the longest running in the town of Stone. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Ian and I'm a retired charity chief executive. Hi, I'm Mandy. I'm a regional sales manager. Hi, I'm Keith. I'm a trainer in financial services. Hi, I'm Kath and I'm studying for a master's in performance. Hello, I'm Mark and I'm an NHS manager. So, Ian and team, hello. Hello. Oh, great to see you. Wow, such a lively hello. It's, we know we've got dramatists in the house. <laughs> it's drama that links you, Ian, is that right? It is. We're all members of the Stone Revelers uh, Amateur Musical Theatre Society. And we do everything from Shakespeare to Panto and most things in between. And are you all the stage people, the actors, or have we got stage hands here and lighting people? And We, we all do various jobs. You yeah, do some, everything? Yeah, a lot on stage. I'm written the panto that we're currently uh, rehearsing, uh, as well as being in it. The last show, there was four of us that were in the last show that we did in various parts. So you wrote the panto? With a, with a colleague oh, no, of mine. <laughs> <laughs> we might come to that later on. I suppose I should ask whether you have quizzed before. Never together. Quite often against each other. All right, so now we're all facing in the same direction. Is that Absolutely. right? Yes. And no noises off. <laughs> it's going to be the five of you. Good luck, challengers. Thank you. Thank you. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to win, the prize money rolls over to the next show. Now, Stone Revelers, the Eggheads had a little bit of a spin the other game and were turned around by a challenging team. They then won one. They're trying to get into their stride. You've got to stop them. If you do, you win two thousand pounds. Would you like to try now? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of geography, and you can choose between Beth, Steve, Barry, Kevin, Lisa. Yeah, Keith. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. go for it? Yeah. That looks like it's going to be Keith. Okay. Financial services man. Against which egghead, Keith? Lisa, please. Keith, hooray! <laughs> Let's go and have some fun! <laughs> Absolutely. See, she's a dramatist as well. <laughs> uh, Keith from the Stone Revelers versus our own reveller from the Eggheads. Lisa, to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the legendary question room? So you spent quite a bit of time in the Navy, Keith? Yes, that's right. Great, and of course that's rather handy for the geography round, I'm thinking. Well, yeah, but obviously sometimes I might have been a bit Worse for wear in some of the places, so my memories might not be quite as good as it could be. But good on oceans, yeah? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah. So geography, Keith, would you like to go first or second? Um, first, please. And here we go. The seaside town of Ilfracombe is located on which body of water? Bristol Channel, The Wash, or English Channel? Ilfracombe, Devon. Bristol Channel. Bristol Channel's right, well done. Perfect question for you, I'm thinking. Yeah, not far, yeah. <laughs> OK, here we go. Your question, Lisa. Which of these is a nickname of the US state of Alabama? The Empire State, the Peach State, or the Heart of Dixie? Uh, it ain't the Empire State. I think the Peach State's in Georgia, so it must be the Heart of Dixie. It is the Heart of Dixie. Your yeah. second question, Keith. Chesapeake Bay is on which coast of the USA? North, south, or east? Could, could you spell it, please, Jeremy? Yeah, it's C-H-E-S-A-P-E-A-K-E, -E -E, all one word, Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake. It doesn't sound very eastern. It sounds more southern, so I, I'll go for the south. I've, for some reason, got Massachusetts or Boston in my head here, but I'm not sure. East is the right answer. Let's just check. Hey, kids, can you, at least, have you know this? Yeah, I've actually been uh, up the Chesapeake River. It's uh, in Maryland, I think. All right, your question is set to take the lead. Which of these African countries is located on the Indian Ocean? Namibia, Tanzania, or Senegal? Uh, Namibia and Senegal are on the left-hand side of Africa when you look at the map, which puts them on the Atlantic side rather than the Indian, must be Tanzania. Yes, good reasoning. We're big on our oceans in this round, aren't we, my goodness? <laughs> Just made for Keith. Bodies of water, yeah, Tanzania's right. OK, Keith, see if we can get another ocean for you. The market town of Chesterfield 
is in which county? Warwickshire, Derbyshire, Lancashire. Derbyshire. <laughs> Derbyshire's right. Well done, two out of three. Let's see if it's enough to get you through to sudden death. Lisa, if you get this one right, you are in the final round. Peebles and Hoyk are towns in which area of Scotland? Hoyk is H-A-W-I-C-K. Borders, Highlands, West Coast. I think Hoyk is getting on for about as far north as you can go. And again, yeah, Pe Peebles, you, I think you're getting up. I think you're getting up north. It ain't the borders. And I don't think it's the West Coast. We'll go with the Highlands. Yeah, that's funny. You've gone the wrong way. It is the West Coast. I think it's, no, it's borders. Is it? Long way further down. Oh, sure they were in the north. That's really weird. You see, I could not reconcile Peebles with being in the north. It's my own fault for not thinking that one through. Never mind. So, yeah. level after three. That's handy, Keith. Yep. Timely. Yep. And we go to sudden death. Gets a little bit harder now. I don't give you alternatives. Which country has borders with Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt, Niger, Chad, and Sudan? Libya. Libya's right. Good answer. That, that's a, yeah. Well done, Libya's right. So Lisa under pressure. Which mountain range, Lisa, occupies sections of Russia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia? I will no doubt pick the wrong one, because Russia's got a few. I don't know, first thought was the Urals, we'll say the Urals. Oh. <coughs> ah, coughing and spluttering from the eggheads. Why eggheads? Because <laughs> it's the Caucasus. Well, Caucasus is the answer, Lisa. Ah, You've been knocked out on geography. Well done, yeah. Keith. Thank you. <laughs> there we are. The Navy man is in the final. He took on an egghead, you emerged triumphant. So come back to us and we will play round two. So as it stands, the stone revelers have not lost any brains from the final round. It's a great start. Well done. The curtains have opened <laughs> on the dramatist. The first scene has gone well. The air kids have lost the brain. And the next subject for you is film and TV. I'm reckoning that's good. Who would like this? Me or you? Yeah. I'll save Monday. you for F Sport. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Shall I do it? Yeah. Yeah, I think I've saved Monday for sport, yeah. I think I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> right, I watch Kath. a lot of TV. <laughs> okay, well, performance studies is your thing, I know. And against which egghead, Kath, can be anyone but Lisa? Beth. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way. Beth, please. You, Beth. Okay, Kath from the Stone Revel is taking on Beth from the eggheads on film and TV. Please take your positions. <laughs> film and TV, Kath, do you want to go first or second? I think I'm going to go first, please. <laughs> And here we go. Which of these TV sitcoms was broadcast first on UK TV? Only Fools and Horses, The Good Life, or Dad's Army? Okay, so I'm gonna go with what I remember watching and what I remember my parents watching to kind of eliminate answers. My gut instinct uh, was Dad's Army, so that's what I'm gonna go for. Dad's Army's right, well done. I mean, they are, all of them from before, you were born in the late 80s, I'm thinking, so all, all these were performed before you were born, but yeah, the Dad's Army is the one about Second World War. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Beth, which fictional character has been played on screen by Albert Finney, Peter Ustinov, and David Suchet? Hercule Poirot, Dracula, or Tarzan? Uh, the, uh, the little Belgian uh, Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot is quite right. I think Peter Houston off as Tarzan would have been a stretch. <laughs> okay, over to you. Kath, what is the surname of the character played by Zoe Saldana in the Star Trek series of films? Is it Uhura, Sulu, or Troy? Oh no, my dad is such a big Star Trek fan. See, I know that Uhuru means freedom. I'm gonna go for Uhura. She right, Beth? Yeah, she's right. Ahura is correct. Well done. Okay, Beth. Which Oscar-winning actress plays May Parker in the film Spider-Man: Homecoming? Mira Sorvino, Marisa Tomei, or Gina Davis? Um, it's part of the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't think it was either Gina Davis or Mira Sorvino. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Marisa Tomei. Marisa Tomei is correct. So you're going great guns, both of you. Well done, Kath, so far. Third question can be crucial. Here we go. Which role is played by the Welsh actor Luke Evans in the 2017 film version of Beauty and the Beast? Is it Belle's father, the Beast, or Gaston? It's definitely not Gaston. Oh, I'm trying to... I've seen the film, absolutely love it. 
I feel like the beast was someone that I've that I've heard of. I'm gonna go with Belle's father. It's Gaston. <gasps> oh no. Did you remember Gaston in the film? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was someone else. Oh no. All right. So Beth has a chance to take the round. The TV drama series Strike is based on a series of books by which writer, using the pseudonym Robert Galbraith, J.K. Rowling, Andy McNabb, or Dan Brown. I think it's, um, it's a cormorant strike, um, and Robert Galbraith is a pen name of J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling is quite right. Well done, Beth. Three out of three. Sorry, Kath. That's okay. Just take it <laughs> on the bend there by Beth. He'll be in the final, and as a result, you've been knocked out. Come back to us, and we'll play on. Okay, the stone revelers have now lost the brain from the final round. You see how hard it is to demolish these eggs. They've lost one as well on this side. We play on, and it's politics. So who wants politics? It's gonna have to be me. What do you think? It's gonna be Mark. Mark? Mark. 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 Okay, Mark. NHS manager against which egghead, Mark? Any of the three guys in the middle? Steve, please. No easy way, is there? Mark takes on Steve, the stone of the eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions in the question room. So good luck, Mark, and it's politics. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Good luck, Mark. How many prime ministers of the UK were there in the 20th century? 10, 20 or 40? 10 feels definitely too small. 40, that'd be two, two and a half years each. I think that's too large. So I'm going to say 20. It's a good way of working it out, actually. Yeah, 20 is right. Average five years each. Steve, which of these politicians appeared as a contestant in a Christmas episode of Strictly Come Dancing in 2010? Jeremy Corbyn, Vince Cable or Nigel Farage? Not as Scooby. Um, I'm going to rule out Nigel Farage. <sighs> Vince Cable. Yeah, you're right. I suppose if you were going to try and get there through logic, Corbyn at that time was not Labour leader. Mm. So he was pretty obscure Labour backbencher in a way. So Vince Cable's right. Well done. OK, back to you, Mark. What was the name of the 17-year-old activist for female education who was a co-recipient of the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize? Is it Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Tawakol Karman, or Malala Yousafzai? I believe it's Malala Yousafzai. Yes, it is Malala. Well done. Steve, Benjamin Disraeli famously said that he climbed to the top of what when he became Prime Minister in 1868? Was it the greasy pole, the mountain top, or the slag heap? It's the greasy pole, Jeremy. Yeah, famous quote, greasy pole, is right. So level after two, let's see if you can pull clear here, Mark. In which year was the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau born? Was he 1971, 75 or 79? May regret this, but I'm going to say 1971. <laughs> Challengers, what do you think? Yeah, I think he's 1979. I think, okay, he is a very good looking man for his age. 1971 is quite right. Well done. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to guess that. Don't know what's going on with Mr. Trudeau, but uh, he could bottle it. All right, Steve, your question. In 1990, who said in a speech to Parliament, it is rather like sending your opening batsmen to the crease only for them to find, as the first balls are being bowled, that their bats have been broken? Norman Lamont, John Major, or Geoffrey Howe? I think that's a very famous speech by Geoffrey Howe. Now, yeah, I think we left the key words off the end by the team captain, he said, broken by the team captain. Geoffrey Howe's the right answer, 3-3. Three, three. So, Mark, scores level, sudden death. Gets a bit harder, I don't give you alternatives. Who was the Vice President of the United States from 1973 to 1974? Thinking back here, politics wasn't something I was um, engaged with at that time, but there was a, uh, a change of power in that area and he wasn't Vice President for four years. So that would make it, I hope, Gerald Ford. Yes, well done, Gerald Ford was. Okay, Steve, your question to stay in. Which politician born in Eastbourne in 1956 had a mother named Zaidi and a father named Hubert? 
I really don't know. Um, I've absolutely no idea. Um, let's. I might as well go out with a silly guess. Um, Paul Boateng. The answer is actually Theresa May. Joke. It really is. Mark, well done. You've taken on an AK. You knocked him out. And you've emerged triumphant and you will be in the final. So advantage now to our challengers. This is getting interesting, isn't it? Come back. We've got one more round to play before the final round. So as it stands, the Stone Revelers have lost one break from the final round. The Eggheads have lost two. And your next subject, the last before the final, is music. So it's Mandy or Ian? It'll be me. Okay. <laughs> Mandy, against which egghead? And it's either Barry or Kevin. Oh. I think Kim. Barry's actually, Barry's actually the worst on you. Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I'll go for Barry. 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 Yeah. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Barry. Yeah, sure, I you think. <laughs> <laughs> we might clash, actually. <laughs> well, let's see. Good. Mandy from the Stone Revelers versus Barry on music from the eggheads. Please, for the last time, go to our question room. So, music, Mandy, first or second? I'll go first, please. <laughs> And here we go. In which year did Robbie Williams release his first solo album? 1997, 2004, or 2011? Well, 2011, I think, is way too late. So I'm going to go for 2004. Challengers, what do we think? 97. Earlier, yeah, 97. Okay. Barry, which of these is a famous song credited in the UK charts to Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel? White Christmas, White Lines Don't Don't Do It, or White Rabbit? <laughs> well, yeah, it can't be White Christmas. I mean, White Rabbit, I think, was uh, Grace Slick and Jefferson Airplanes. So I shall have to go for White Lines. White Lines is right. Don't Don't Do It. OK, <sighs> Mandy, which of these composers was born first? Frederick Delius, Richard Wagner, or Johann Sebastian Bach? I'm going to go for Johann Sebastian Bach. And you've got it absolutely right. Well done. Johann Sebastian Bach. Barry, which song begins with these lines? Come up to meet you, tell you I'm sorry. You don't know how lovely you are. I had to find you, tell you I need you, tell you I set you apart. Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol. The Scientist by Coldplay or Champagne Supernova by Oasis? It just doesn't sound like chasing cars or, or, the, or the scientist. I'll go for Champagne. Lisa, help us out. I actually had to do this on elimination because I could sing you the beginnings of Chasing Cars and Champagne Supernova, although on this occasion I will spare you, so it's actually The Scientist. OK, The Scientist is the answer, Barry. You got it wrong, so level. And third question now to you, Mandy. New Rules was the first UK number one single by which British artist? Dua Lipa, Rita Ora or Stormzy? I'd say it's not Stormzy. I'm going to go for Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa is correct. Well done. Only because I'm an amazing Stormzy fan, so oh, okay. I definitely was not Stormzy. Very cool. OK, get this wrong barrier out. The West End musical Girl from the North Country features the songs of which man? Randy Newman, Neil Diamond, or Bob Dylan. If you're travelling on the North Country Road, well, that's one of my fa all-time favourite songs by Mr. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is correct. Well done. So level after three, we go to sudden death, man. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternatives. Here's your question. In 1984, Ray Parker Jr. had a UK top ten hit single with the theme tune to which film? Uh, that would be Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is correct. Well done. OK, you're hanging on in. Barry, get this wrong, you're out. Which Stephen Sondheim musical first performed on Broadway in 1971 is set in a crumbling Broadway theatre scheduled for demolition? There's a little night music. I'm wondering if a chorus line is a Stephen Sondheim one. Ooh, which one is it? Try a chorus line. No, Barry, follies. Oh, dear. knocked out. Well done, that. Annie, that's good. That's very, very good for the challengers. Oh, my goodness, you took on an AK. You emerged triumphant. You will be in the final. And if you come back to us now, both of you, we will play that final round for £2,000. All right, this is what we've been playing towards. What an exciting game so far. Time for our final round. 
It's going to be general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads are not going to take part in this round. So it's Kath from Stone Revelers, but also Steve, Barry and Lisa from the Eggheads. Would you please now leave the studio? Well, Ian, Mandy, Keith and Mark, you played well to this point. Look at you, all four of you. And you're now playing to win the Stone Revelers £2,000. Beth and Kevin, it's a bit of a rearguard action, isn't it, to defend the Eggheads' precious reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, the questions are all general knowledge. You are allowed to confer. So, challenges. The question is, can your four brains take down these two? Sounds straightforward when I put it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> Stone Revelers, do you want to go first or second? Well, we first has served us well so far, so we'll go first, please, Jeremy. And here we go with your first question. Which of these words can mean unpleasantly bitter or pungent, fecund, acrid, or mellifluous? Acrid. I, I think acrid. acrid. That would be acrid, Jeremy. Acrid is right. Eggins. In 2016, the free diver Alex Segura Vendrell set a Guinness World Record by holding his breath for how long? Was it just over four minutes? Just over 14 minutes or just over 24 minutes? It won't be four minutes, that's relatively simple, I would say, for a free diver. Mm. I think 24 is hard to. I don't think. 14? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, we don't, we don't know it. Neither of us had come across this particular um, story. We think we'll go down the middle with 14. Okay. He did 24. Wow. So you're wrong, Ike. It's just over 24 minutes is the answer. Real wow. knowledge is a dangerous thing. Challenges, <laughs> you're in charge now. <laughs> Which of these famous plays features trolls, a Bedouin, and the devil? Arms of the Man, Peer Gint, or the Seagull? Any ideas? Well, Peer Gint is Norwegian, isn't it? Scandinavian. Mm -hmm. We've got trolls. Yeah. 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 yeah, good point. I think Peer Gint. Peer Gint. Gint. That's Peer Gint. the one that first yeah. got me. Yeah. 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 We're going for Peer Gint, Jeremy. I happened to see this play last summer at the Edinburgh Fringe, and you're quite right, it is Peer Gint. Well done. Okay, <laughs> eggheads. The lost city of Zed, so named by the British explorer Percy Fawcett, is a theoretical city located in which part of the world? Is it the Amazon rainforest, Congo Basin, or Outer Mongolia? Amazon, Amazon. rainforest. Yeah. Up the, up the Amazon. Uh, yeah, there was a there was a film uh, which came out in I think 2016 about this called called The Lost City of Z, and it's the Amazon rainforest. Amazon rainforest is quite right. Well done. Okay, so the kids are on the scoreboard now, but you can take the jackpot with your third question. Challengers, two thousand pounds we're playing for. If you get this right, there will be no way back for the eggs. In which year was the philosopher Immanuel Kant born? 1624. 1724 or 1824? Kant. Kant, I believe, has done a lot of um, strategy and, and been used in industry. So I've no real clue, but I think I would go for 1820 or the later one. So he would have influenced the Industrial Revolution age, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what exactly. I would have gone for, yeah. a later date rather than an earlier date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm going 1824? Yeah. yeah. 1824, Jeremy. 1824. There's a lot of them not going on in the 1800s. One thing we know about Kevin is that he knows his dates. What was it, Kevin? 1724. 1724 is the correct answer. So you've given the eggheads a way back now, and they are very good at finding a way back when you offer them the chance. Eggheads, to stay in the contest. Who wrote the Mr. Gum series of books for children? Francesco Simon, Andy Stanton, or Julia Donaldson? Oh, it's not, certainly not Julia Donaldson. No, Gruffalo and all that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know this. So. My grandchildren are still too young to really read these. Francesca Simon didn't write Horrid Henry, did she? It might be something like that, yeah. It, it's well known. I think a well-known series. Oh, okay. And Mr. Gunn doesn't mean anything no, to me. No, it's a well-known series within sort of pre-teens. Yeah. So on that basis, I'm wondering if it might be better to go, I mean, for Andy Stanton, simply on the basis that... I'm happy with what I'd, 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 
Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a kind of a, it's a negative tactic. But mm. I, don't, I, don't, I can't. I, I've, I've heard. I've definitely heard of Francesca Simon, but it's not in relation to that. But right. it's not to say that it's okay. not her. So. Well, let's go with Andy Stanton because yeah. it's not Jimmy okay. Donaldson. So yeah. let's go with yeah. Andy yeah. Stanton. Yeah, they're not, they're not falling well for us today, I'm afraid, unfortunately, these things. Uh, we don't think it's Julia Donaldson. So on the basis that we don't know anything about Andy Stanton, go for that. OK, Andy Stanton is your answer. Do you know what Francesca Simon writes? She's the horrid Henry. Yeah, she is horrid Henry. So you were, you were sort of nudging close to that, you eggs. And it is Andy Stanton. You've got it right. Well done. You did quite good elimination there. All right. So challenges. We go to sudden death. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternative options. Here we go. The term Ivy League coined in the context of intercollegiate sport now more broadly refers to a specific prestigious group of how many American universities? So how many? Ooh. Ooh. Yale, Harvard, Princeton. Beyond that. Not really the red bricks. Is Georgetown Ivy League Washington University? Five. I think I, I've got a feeling it was five, but I can't think of know what the names are. No, that's more of a league than three. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, could be more than that, though, couldn't it? So we're not certain, are we? No. No, now, we can't make our minds up here, Jeremy, as you can probably tell. Um, we can name three, and we think there's probably at least two others, so we're going to say five. Okay. Well, Harvard, Yale, Princeton are three. That is true. But there were more than two others. The answer is eight. eight. Oh, Can you tell us the know. others? I could probably get close to it. I mean, there's Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia. Yep. Um, Brown. Yes. Cornell. Yep. Pennsylvania. Yep. Is it Dartmouth? Dartmouth. Well done, yeah. Kevin. That's yeah. brilliant. Okay. Those are the eight. Now, eight kids, you can take the contest with this question. In terms of methods of stock valuation and data storage, what does the acronym LIFO, L-I-F-O, stand for? Last in, first out, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it is in terms of storage and getting things out easily. It's, we think it's last in, first out. The answer is indeed last in, first out. We say congratulations, there, kids. What a comeback! You've won. <laughs> Oh, it was that beastly Emmanuel Kant. Yes. It was. It was 1724, not 1824. Thank you so much for coming and playing, Stan Rebel. It's fantastic to have a dramatic team. Really great to see you. The eight kids are getting back into their stride and they do reign supreme over Quizland once again. We don't often see Beth and uh, Kevin in the final. So it does mean that you're not going home with the £2,000. We take that money, we roll it over to our next show and we say congratulations to you, X, and we wonder whether you will be beaten anytime soon. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eight kids over here. They're going to go down again at some point, aren't they? There'll be three thousand pounds to play for. Till then, goodbye.